Good evening, everybody. It is 921 here in Florida, and I just want to come on with a, a, a message for you guys. This is compliments of Brother Earl Dennison, and I'd like to say thank you so much, Brother. Um, this is just an awesome, awesome message that you have left for me in my mail. Um, so I want to share it with you guys, so um, just bear with me. I'll read it out the best I can. Uh, the title of it is Paid For But Not Forgiven. A listener sent me a quote from something they recently read on Facebook. And we all know that everything on Facebook is true, right? Wink, wink, nodge, nodge. <laughs> People die and go to hell every day having their sins paid for. But no one dies and goes to hell having their sins forgiven. Forgiveness is not granted until the gift has been accepted. Hmm. So let me get this straight. God is still holding the sins he paid for against us. Not a chance. Unfortunately, the person who wrote this thinks our sins were paid for, but not forgiven. A statement that defeats itself. Sin that's paid for is sin that's forgiven. If a debt is paid, the debt is forgiven. Otherwise, the debt would still be owed. Having sins paid for but not forgiven is judicially impossible. God could not have rightfully said, that all the world's sins were paid for, but still being held against them. God cannot hold you accountable for something that is paid for. That is nonsensical. When I first read this, I imagined myself in God's courtroom and him saying, Mr. Searcy, your debt has been paid. Now lock him up. Really? Debt forgiveness is also known as debt cancellation. God did not accept a payment to only then turn around and require us to believe it in order to make the payment valid. The payment is valid with or without our belief of it. Webster's says, forgiven means to grant relief from payment. To forgive a debt, Webster's got it right. So, Webster says forgiven means to grant relief from payment. To forgive a debt. Well, Webster's got it right. In biblical context, both paid for and forgive, forgiveness are synonymous. Luke 7:42 Christ paid for the sin debt and God was satisfied If a paid for sin debt was still unforgiven then God would not have been satisfied I'll say that again you guys Christ paid the sin debt and God was satisfied If a paid for debt was still unforgiven, then God would not have been satisfied. And make no mistake, God has never been satisfied with sin. Second Corinthians 5.19 tells us that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Not imputing means no longer being charged to or blamed for. On the merit of Christ and his cross work accomplishment, sins are no longer imputable to our account. If God is not imputing our sins unto us, then he is no longer charging them to us. It's just that simple. The world has been conciliated, made compatible. A truth that most haven't heard because almost no one preaches it. The world is not saved 
but ready to be. Sin had to be taken out of the way, and it was. Now, what the world needs is faith. Faith in the finished cross work of the risen Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now back to the rest of the quote. Forgiveness is not granted until the gift has been accepted. No, salvation is not granted until the gift has been accepted. I'll say that again. No, salvation is not granted until the gift has been accepted. The author of the quote is wrong again. Forgiveness was granted almost 2,000 years ago and is not waiting on anyone to accept anything. Forgiveness and salvation are not the same thing. You cannot be saved without being forgiven. But you can be forgiven mm -hmm, without being saved. A common hurdle some cannot get over is that getting sins forgiven does not equal salvation. This is why universalists have it wrong. God had to first take care of sin issue and did so via Christ on the cross. Christ died one time for every person's every sin. Forgiveness is not something waiting for our belief, but something that has already taken place. Your sin was past tense, forgiven, because it was paid for by the risen Christ. However, you are not saved unless you believe that. Salvation is not getting your sins forgiven. It's believing they already are. So in conclusion, paid for but not forgiven. It's nothing short of a logical fallacy. It's just like the woman that washed Jesus' feet with her hair, you guys. She got on her knees. And she washed him with her most expensive perfume. Why did she do that? Because she knew, she knew that through him, she would be forgiven. And the ones that are forgiven much, love much. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Thank you, Brother Earl, for this. This is such a blessing. Um, I'm sorry, you guys, in a couple parts I messed up of it. And my husband came home in the middle of it. But I think you guys got the, you got the jest. But anyways, I hope you guys have a blessed night. Amen and amen.